Hi, my name is Jeff Baxter with NetApp, and I'm pleased today to be joined by Ravi Kaveri, VP of Engineering for ONTAP here at NetApp. Ravi, thanks for joining me. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me, Jeff. So, brought you here today. We're here to talk about NetApp's vision for NVMe, storage class memory, and a whole class of related sort of next generation technologies that we're seeing emerging. I'm hearing, you know, just this tremendous amount of buzz around NVMe and storage class memory. I'm sure it's something that uh, your team's been working on now for, for quite a while, actually. Um, yes, they have. Um, so NVMe um, has generated a lot of buzz yeah. um, in a little while. And uh, NVMe is, a, is an interesting technology that um, is an interface to the SSDs mm -hmm. that fundamentally exploits the parallelism that is built into the SSDs. Okay. So you can get a lot out of the SSDs, both in terms of you know IOPS and, and, and latency improvements and things like that. Okay. It's a newer interface to 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 the storage media, mm -hmm. and um, uh, that's where the kind of bus started. Okay. Obviously, um, we are working on it, and and so is everybody else. So you should expect to see a lot of our products um, introducing NVMe. Yeah. As you know, we already shipped NVMe, so yeah. this is not like a new technology for us. Absolutely. But we'll be introducing that in, in all of our products moving forward. Tell me a little bit about now about storage class memory. That's the other buzzword I hear. I also hear persistent memory, different things like that. Yeah, I generally like to categorize them as persistence mem memory. Um, there's a, a series of technologies all the way from uh, DRAM-based technologies with mm -hmm. non-volatility um, in those yeah. to you know some of our industry partners like Intel introducing yeah. 3D Crosspoint and, and Samsung talking about the ZSSD, the ZNAND yeah. um, technology. So I like to put them into the persistent memory category uh, generally just because of the inherent properties of ultra low latency access to the data mm -hmm. and uh, also you know um, they, they, they're byte addressable as well. Right. So uh, we've, it's we've, a new class of media. And, and we've kind of seen people, uh, you know, customers, when I talk to different customers talking about uh, really this transformation, right? So Flash has been really essential to helping them, you know, embrace this digital transformation, but there's a whole class of new emerging applications that are requiring even more, right? So I'm hearing real-time analytics, right? Things like fraud detection, right? Pushing analytics out more towards the edge. Um, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all these other things where really shifting the conversation from, you know, milliseconds down to microseconds, right, is all a part of that real-time response to enable this application. Yeah, very good question, exactly. So I, I look at the, the trends um, on, the, on, on three fronts, right? One is around the, the media, and mm -hmm. the other is around the transports. Yeah. So we talked about the SSDs. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, hard drives were in the yeah, anywhere from two to, to eight millisecond right. range. SSDs were somewhere between 100 to, to two to 300. Yeah. microsecond range. Yeah. So this class of media, you know, all the way from, you know, obviously DRAM me means that yeah. you can you can access it really, really fast and, right. and to say so anywhere from, you know, microsecond yeah. with all this, you know, software overheads included yeah. up to like 20 to 25 microseconds. Okay. So an order of magnitude better. Right. Um, and, and that's why I think the NVMe is very interesting in order to get the, the, the parallelism and the ultra low latency access. My expectation is that these new persistent media, yeah. right, the PMAM is going to be introduced either on the memory bus or on the NVMe only. Well, That's okay. why NVMe is very interesting. Gotcha. Um, what is the other thing I want to mention is NVMe, um, while it is a, 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 um, a way to connect to the new media, yeah. NVMe is a, as a standard can also run on top of fabrics. Okay. So, so things like, for example, fiber channel, Ethernet, um, the, the same exact um, specification can run over the, the, the So this fabric. is what you're talking about down on this layer, right? Being able right. to take where you might have an existing fiber channel switch and move it over to NVMe over fabrics? Right. So, so you know, we, we actually got pretty excited about the fiber channel and the NVMe over fabrics because what is interesting about this particular one is that without actually changing and introducing newer hardware, mm -hmm. the existing, you know, storage from us, not, right. not you know really old stuff, but some of the most recent ones, yeah. <laughs> and also the newer switch fabric and the servers. Right. Um, by updating the, the, the firmware and the software, mm -hmm. um, you can actually run this new protocol, um, NVMe over fabrics over fiber channel, right. which inherently you know, speeds our expectation is that there will be a, a, a bump from right. a price performance standpoint. Right. So um, that's 
you know, one of the, in, the reasons why it's kind of an exciting field where yeah. it's not just the media, right. it's the, also the transport right. that is getting fast and making it um, accessible to, to come up with new ways of, yeah. um, regardless of where the media is, you can yeah. exploit the inherent properties. And, that. you know, we hear from every CIO out there that they really are interested in forklifting their entire data center, right, and replacing all their equipment. <laughs> so the ability to come in with, you know, potentially a software upgrade with some of the more modern gear, right, I know we haven't committed to you know exact releases and platforms yet, but it's definitely our vision to be able to come in and Absolutely. enable that transition without some expensive forklift of your entire data center. Absolutely. Very cool. Absolutely. Let's transition over to the storage class memory. Uh, you know, maybe what we got going on up here. This is interesting. I don't see this as why aren't we just shifting to all SCM arrays, right? Isn't that the next step? Uh, you know, anytime we, we've seen this uh, story before, right? A storage mm -hmm. class memory um, is a new kind of a media. Yep. Um, it's going to have new endurance characteristics, mm -hmm. a different cost profile. Yep. Our expectation is that it's probably going to be about, you know, 10 times more expensive. Right. Um, usually when the new media gets in, introduced into the market, mm -hmm. you know, something similar happened. We saw that with the flash as well. Right. Our expectation is, you know, when you see a, a fa uh, an ultra low latency, you know, media, you know, that's starting to come up, it's going to be available in smaller quantities. Right. The affordability is, 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 is a little bit less. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to introduce that storage class memory into our storage array, yeah. where we can inherently take advantage of the ultra low latency aspects of it, both for internal purposes to handle metadata and things like that, right. but our expectation is that we're going to make the latencies better. Gotcha. And so, you know, some of the, the read acceleration and things like that will be introduced. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, all handle, we'll also handle certain type of write workloads where there's a lot of change that's happening. Yeah. And so, you know, we have absolutely plans to introduce storage class memory into our uh, storage class memory and the, the, the non-volatile RAM yeah. um, into our storage okay. uh, to, to speed up the, the, the not only the existing workloads, yeah. but the newer applications that demand ultra low latency. Yeah. Um, we plan to, to, to modify our software and introduce storage class memory there. And when I first heard this, it sounds like a vaguely familiar story, right? <laughs> From seven, eight years ago when you know, Flash first started coming out, it was so expensive and everything like that, and we used Flash to basically take care of some metadata but accelerate, you know, yeah. reads going to hard drives. Now we're using storage class memory to accelerate all Flash, and the right. cycle continues, right? right? I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and w what is also interesting is we, uh, we also think that this storage class memory and this persistent memory yeah. is also going to be available on the, on the, on the server side. Okay. Embeddance. Uh, what's interesting about this area here is that, mm -hmm. you know, there's a memory-like access you can do Right. to this new kind of a media. Okay. Which means, you know, there's a lot of our uh, application partners are getting very excited about using that yep. for persistence reasons. Yep. So we thought about, you know, how to actually introduce a software layer of ours mm -hmm. into the server, right. wh which it, it inherently takes advantage of the fact that there is going to be persistent memory right. um, when it is available. Right. How do we actually provide and extend some of our data management capabilities all the way up to the server. Okay. So our thought process is that we're going to offer a, a, a software that's mm -hmm. going to look like a library. Mm -hmm. It's going to provide a POSIX interface. It's mm -hmm. going to provide a block interface. Mm -hmm. and, and even you know, some of the, 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 the newer you know, key value store interfaces that we're working on right. so that the applications over there, yeah. rather than each of them trying to take you know, inherent advantage of the, the PMAM and, and, yeah. and try to deal with that, yeah. we'll have a, a thin software layer mm -hmm. that takes care of and, and exploits the, 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 the parallelism that's available in that one, right. provide ultra low latency access, right. but it comes with you know, a lot of the data management capabilities mm -hmm. like consistency, you know, some of the snapshotting technology, right. uh, like clone technology and things like that. Okay. But our goal is not to create that independent island right. just to handle that. Right. Our goal is to utilize the advantages on the on the ultra mm -hmm. you know, low latency transport as well right. and, and be able to work with the back end storage yeah. so that we can kind of introduce the, the, the new style applications and the server resident storage class memory and the persistent memory. Right. But make it part of that connected ecosystem of data management that we can do that. Yeah. It makes it makes a lot of sense to me. The thing that I love is, you know, you go to you go to NVMe over fabric on its own, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. You go to NVMe SSDs on its own, fine or whatever, right? But you start to understand why we're so excited about this when you start talking about, okay, now I can put storage class memory in there and I'm gonna absolutely mute the latency. Oh, now I'm gonna be linking persistent memory in the server using these next generation transports right. to link it to storage that may have its own you know, persistent Correct. memory. Yeah. And it's, it's, 
a pretty comprehensive vision that links together all these technologies instead of being just individual point solutions. Yeah, we think so. We, you know, even though these are three independent trends, when we, you know, started looking at them, while there is a little bit of a discrepancy when they will be introduced, yeah. we think having a vision that connects all of the, this into mm -hmm. a, a single vision where we can start introducing technologies as it becomes available yeah. in bulk, but it completes the vision of, you know, our customers have trusted us with their data management for a long time. Right. How do we extend that right. to the new, you know, disruptive trends that are happening both on the media side, the transport side, and the, and the application side, right. and, and be there for them to, to, to adopt that. Yeah. Taking that legacy and track record that we've had now for 25 <laughs> years, right? Yeah. Of transition after transition, extending it out the Absolutely. next 25 years with some of these new technologies. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for sharing this, and I want to thank everyone for uh, tuning in to kind of hear what our vision is for NVMe and storage class memory. I think you heard Ravi kind of walk through uh, this comprehensive vision that takes advantage of NVMe, takes advantage of storage class memory across an entire architecture, and really uses it to take these disruptive technologies and introduce them non-disruptively into our customers' environments and help accelerate their business. You can definitely look uh, adjacent to this video for some additional resources to learn more about NetApp's vision for NVMe and storage class memory. And I want to thank you for your time.